Today we're going to take a closer look at the latest new Honda Trail 125, also known as the Hunter Cub and CT125 around the world, but no matter what you want to call it, this is one of the hottest bikes on the planet. Why? Well, that's what we're going to dive into today. Oh, okay. And we're going to touch on everything you need to know about it from what changes were thrown at it this year to all of the nitty gritty details you need to know when it comes to this little 150 mile per gallon motorcycle that's history dates back to well before a lot of us were even born. Before we do that though, if you find my content helpful and or enjoy it, what? I know that last part is a stretch there, but if you'd like to help keep these videos coming, please consider checking out the join button below and some of these support links down in the description that also include discount codes for parts and accessories which helps to keep this train chugging along as without your support my days are numbered and first up let's get into options when buying a new ct125 do you have any nope unlike other corners around the world they get three colors to choose from this year we're stuck with one yet again but on the upside it's not just red for the third year in a row with this new pearl organic green coming in to replace glowing red and if you haven't seen this shade of green in person yet as we all know availability on these has been slim at best for a while now but it's the same green used on the rebel 500 and cb 500x and to finish up on options unlike the grom 125 where you have an option on buying an abs model or not the trail comes standard with honda's anti-lock braking system but we'll dive more into that shortly next up let's get into the chassis and suspension the ct125 steel backbone frame is based off of the super cup platform but honda went through and changed some things to make it a bit more beefy due to the cub being more street oriented while the trail is something that is capable of taking you off-road one being that the head pipe is reinforced and the triple clamp was also redesigned as well from the super cub to improve the overall balance of rigidity and flex for you know i don't know i just woke up from a little nap it's a little dark but you guys silly i'm still gonna send it and when it comes to tipping the scales your curb weight comes in at 256 pounds which is three pounds lighter than last year but at the end of the day it's still the heaviest of the mini moto models from honda but that minuscule difference between them doesn't make this thing any more difficult to ride than the rest and a lot of that is thanks to its low seat height of only 31.5 inches but if you are on the more vertically challenged side of things it's not the lowest seat height out of Honda's mini bikes for the street and here's how they all stack up against each other and before we jump into the suspension let's take a look at some of the things that'll help you when it comes to taking the trail 125 off-road first up is ground clearance and yes you've got an extra 1.1 inches over the cub but the Grom and monkey do come in with a bit more so keep that in mind however what those other bikes don't have straight from the factory is a skid plate to help offer some protection when you're out there playing off-road which then leads us over to the suspension and up front you've got a 27 millimeter fork that brings in 4.3 inches of travel but are they adjustable nope no adjustability here but that's par for the course with honda's entire mini motorcycle lineup and thankfully you do have some adjustability when it comes to the rear suspension with its twin shock setup that brings in 3.4 inches of travel it is just preload that you can fine tune but hey something is better than nothing then we've got your wheels working together with that suspension to help smooth out that ride and at both ends you've got a set of 17 inch spoke wheels that have a beautiful matte finish to them them, rather than the standard gloss black or silver that you normally see and those wheels are wrapped in a set of 80 by 90 dual sport ish tires to help attraction off-road while also being incredibly smooth on-road but if you're wanting something a bit more aggressive there are other options out there as you can see here and they'll be linked below too now pretty wheels aren't going to do you any good if you can't slow them down and thankfully you've got disc brakes front and rear up front you have a 220 millimeter brake rotor with a two piston caliper and out back unlike the super cub that's still sporting a drum brake 
from the 1800s, you have a 190 millimeter disc with a single piston caliper biting down on it. And like we mentioned earlier, the CT does come standard with Honda's single channel anti-lock braking system to help give you a bit more confidence on varying terrains, but keep in mind, it's only active on the front brake. Next up, let's get into the engine and drivetrain. The trail has a 123.9 cc air-cooled two-valve 80 degree single overhead cam single cylinder engine that's very similar to what's in the Super Cub but also shares some components with the Monkey, Grom, and Dax 125 models albeit with slightly different configurations and I don't want to bore you guys to sleep in this video faster than I already have. Wake up! by explaining all of their nitty gritty differences, so we'll save that 10 minute segment for another day. But this new engine setup that's more under square than the first generation, while also having a higher compression ratio, helps the CT to pump out nine horsepower at 6,250 RPM and 8.1 foot pounds of torque to the crank. With that extra 0.3 horsepower coming in earlier in the power band, however, torque stayed the same and it comes in a little later than the last gen. And for comparison's sake, here's how the entire Minimoto motorcycle lineup stacks up against each other when it comes to their engine's performance numbers. In the end, those numbers will help propel you on the Trail 125 to a top speed of right around the 50 to 60 mile per hour mark, depending on how much weight you're hauling around and elevation changes too. Now if that's not enough, and this is you, you need about 24,000 horsepower. Then you've got a slew of big bore kits out there and insert shameless plug here. Check out the CT125 build I did a video on a little while back that was built by Wayne down at the speed shop that's packing a 181cc big bore kit and a laundry list of other goodies. Back on topic though, all the horsepower in the world won't do you any good without a way to put it to the ground, which leads us over to the transmission. Just like the Super Cub and Dax 125 models, the CT125 is sporting a semi-automatic four-speed transmission, so you don't have to worry about using a clutch and stalling the engine. Just click it all the way down for neutral and then up through your four gears and you're good to go. Which leads us over to something that's definitely a love or hate thing for a lot of people and it's exclusive to the CT with it packing a heel toe shifter instead of your normal shifter. And when it comes to maintaining this engine and drivetrain package, you don't have to worry about breaking the bank as there's not much to it. Well, there's more to it now than the last generation as you now have a new oil filter, but that's a good thing. And since it doesn't even hold a full quart of oil, you're still saving money. Now let's bounce around the bike and touch on a few different things. Storage, do you have any? Yeah. No. But that's where this big cargo rack out back comes in handy as you've got plenty of room to strap stuff down, or it also opens up other avenues for mounting a ton of different box setups on the back. It doesn't stop there though, as you also have different racks you can mount in the center of the frame and up on your headlight too for a mini cargo rack, and you've also got saddlebag options too for even more storage. Now, storage is nice, but where's the fuel tank? Well, just like the Super Cub, it's tucked up under the seat. Now, it's only 1.4 gallons in size, so it's definitely not something to get excited about. However, it's larger than the Super Cub's measly one gallon tank, but still, you don't have a lot of extra fuel to play with if you intend on modifying the engine a lot, unless you strap on an auxiliary tank like the OG, and thankfully, that's one of the million different accessories you can throw on the Trail 125. Now, what's the story with that little Allen wrench you may have noticed under the seat? Well, that is how you get into the toolkit. Wait, a toolkit? Yep, a screwdriver. Wow. But hey, that's more than what you get on some bikes these days. Now, how about electronics? Well, you've got LED lighting all around the bike and one of my favorite parts are the turn signals. Wait, what? I know, nobody's ever been excited about blinkers, but I love how Honda didn't just recycle one of the million different lights they have in the parts bin, but I love how they did a squared setup as a throwback to the original. When it comes to gauges, you've got a super simple setup that's easy to read at a glance, and that's because it's pretty basic, which is a good thing when considering how complex some displays are these days, and in return helping this bike be even easier for anyone, no matter the skill level, to just hop on and ride when you pair that up with the controls that are super easy to use and in line with any normal motorcycle, but easier thanks to not having a clutch to worry about using. Now, how about accessories for the Trail 125? As many of us enjoy modifying our bikes, and as we've already touched
touched on briefly, your options are endless. Want a windshield? You've got options. Want to make more horsepower with your CT125? Done. Custom seats or suspension? Check. Want to make more noise? Yep, you've got options there too. Want to carry a passenger around? Of course there are passenger seat kits for your Trail 125 and I'll have some of these accessories linked below for you guys to check out and don't forget, there's discount codes down there too. But long story short, when it comes to modifying and customizing the CT125, you're only held back by your imagination and your bank account. And now I'm curious, what do you guys think about the new Honda Trail 125? And what changes do you think Honda needs to throw at it next? Honda does pay attention to these videos, so let your voices be heard down in the comments section and let's talk about it all, as these videos aren't just for me to ramble on. But on that note, thanks for watching, and if you'd like to help support the future of these videos, please check out those support links below to help keep these videos coming. Thanks for watching and helping to support all of this and a huge thank you again to our supporters for helping to keep this train chugging along and we'll see you guys in the next one.